Oh, Kiran sir, please confirm. Is the screen visible? Yes, yes. Screen is visible, ma'am. Uh, yes, make, thank you. Uh, in a full screen. I'll put it full screen. Okay, now. Yes, it is. Okay, thank you. Oh, Kiran sir, uh, Chinmay ma'am has joined. Oh, Kiran sir, can we start the recording, please? Good afternoon, everyone. ITEC India welcomes all the participants for today's National Distance Learning Seminar Series. Uh, we are disseminating the national guidelines for HIV care and treatment 2021. We are into the fifth session now. Today's topic is PPCT and ART in pregnant women. And the speakers are Dr. A.K. Puri, sir, Dr. Shrikala Acharya, madam, and Dr. Ishwar uh, Gilada, sir. Uh, Dr. A.K. Puri, sir, is not available. I now request Dr. Chinmayi, ma'am, to please give the uh, opening remarks. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. You are audible, but not visible. Oh, yes, uh, just trying to <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, very good afternoon, uh, everyone. So, I see Dr. Gilada, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, Dr. Shrikala, madam. I don't see madam, but very good afternoon to you. And uh, dear esteemed participants of uh, this National Distance Learning Seminar. So, uh, this is the next in the series of discussions that we have been having about uh, the National Technical Guidelines that were launched in 2021 December. So this is a very important topic today, which is about prevention of mother to child transmission. Uh, when we talk about uh, decreasing new infections, this is really important because we have to understand what are the ways in which we can decrease the new infections. And since uh, Maternal to child transmission is one of the major transmission routes. So um, we have to know ways and means of how to decrease this route of transmission. So for this, there are certain uh, very important uh, strategies that uh, we have to adopt under the program. Um, I mean, one would be definitely to detect all the pregnant women who are positive what regimen to give them, when to give them, should we do the viral load testing of these pregnant women, and uh, how much should we follow up the infants who are born to positive pregnant women, how long do we follow up, when, I mean, where do we follow up, who is responsible, I mean, is it uh, the, only the staff of NSCP, or we can also look at uh, entrusting the responsibility to others, that also will definitely put in a word on discussion uh, regarding that. 
should they these infants be on breastfeeding or should we give them uh, well, a, a, a top feed so these are some of the important things that we'll be discussing today how to do risk assessment how to identify high risk infants and what regimens to give so i request all of you to please pay attention and we have a uh, very two eminent speakers uh, dr shrikala acharya madam is uh, apg mdax and dr ishwar gilada who is the president of aids society of india so i hope uh, we'll have a very fruitful discussion and we'll definitely learn a lot regarding how do we embark on the journey to prevent uh, transmission of hiv from mother to child so with this uh, i welcome you all once again and i hand over to dr shrikala and dr gilada so thank you thank you ma'am uh, ma'am we'll just quickly run through the pre test and then continue the session sure thank you oh kiran sir can we have the pre test please thank you participants are now requested to please attempt the pre test quickly there are five questions in all please read through the questions so uh, you uh, th these are single choice answers so you have to select any one answer please scroll uh, through your screen so that all the questions are visible and you can attempt them participants are requested to please attempt the e poll oh kiran sir please confirm if it has started pre poll is launch uh, yeah, it is started okay thank you The first question is: Which of the following statements regarding the risk of HIV transmission from mother to child is not true? Risk of HIV transmission from mother to child is fifteen to twenty-five percent with short course with one ARV and breastfeeding. Risk of HIV transmission from mother to child is twenty to twenty-five percent with no ART and no breastfeeding. Risk of HIV transmission from mother to child is seventy-five to ninety percent with no ARV and breastfeeding. Risk of HIV transmission from mother to child is five to fifteen percent with short course with one ART and no bed, no breastfeeding. Second question is what is the rate of HIV transmission from mother to child with three ARV drugs are used with breastfeeding? Less than zero point zero one percent, two percent, five percent, fifteen to twenty five percent. Which of the following is a target population for prong two of PPDCT? HIV negative. HIV positive mothers, HIV positive and pregnant, HIV positive and not pregnant. Which of the following statements is not true regarding current national guidelines for infant feeding in HIV exposed and infected infants less than six months of age? If the HIV positive mother plans to return to work, she can be reassured by the healthcare worker that not initiating breastfeeding at all is better than shorter duration of breastfeeding of less than twelve months. Beyond six months of age, breastfeeding should continue while complementary feeds are introduced. With optimal adherence to ART and a suppressed maternal viral load, there remains no difference in infant feeding guidelines for HIV exposed versus unexposed infants. Breastfeeding should only stop once a nutritionally adequate and safe diet without breast milk can be provided. Participants are requested to please quickly go through the e poll. I am someone from co-host side is in the poll. Oh, oh, okay, no issues, no issues, Kiran. Thank you. 
Okay. I now request Shikala, ma'am, to please continue the session. Yeah. Uh, am I audible, Shweta? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am. Yeah. So, welcome to all the participants. Thank you, Chinmoy, ma'am, uh, for the introduction for this most important topic on prevention of parent to child transmission and how do we eliminate the risk of HIV infection among our newborn babies who are exposed to the virus from their mothers during pregnancy or childbirth or during breast milk. So next, please. Today, during this session, which Dr. Gilada also would be uh, co-chairing, we would be discussing on burden and what are the PPT city services in our country? What is the essential package in PPT city? And how do we provide these services within NACP and with the general health system also? What are the four pronged strategies for achieving prevention of transmission? We would also be share, looking at what are the current guidelines on the medicines that need to be given to infants so that the exposed infants do not get HIV infection. And most important, we would also be reiterating the information through the various practical case studies uh, on the various cases that we come across in our daily uh, practice in our ART centers. Next, please. The As per the national HIV estimates in 2020, it was estimated that around 81,430 children were estimated to be living with HIV. And this accounts to almost 3.5% of the total HIV infections in our country. About 20,000 pregnant women required ART to prevent the transmission of HIV. And this needs to be brought down to less than 5% for achieving elimination. Next, please. So what are the risks of HIV transmission from an HIV infected mother to baby with or without intervention? All of us know that till 2001, when there were no ARVs which were given to the pregnant women, and the breastfeeding continued from the mother to baby, the risk of HIV transmission were and are without any interventions range from 30 to 45 percent. If the breastfeeding is not given but there is no ART drugs also, the risk reduces to about 20 to 25 percent. As you all know, till 2015, we had short course with one ARV and breastfeeding, which reduced the transmission to 15 to 25%. Uh, you all must be knowing that we were giving the ARV to HIV positive mother at the time of delivery and were covering the baby. The short course with one ARV and no breastfeeding reduced it further to 5 to 15%. It has been found that short course with two ARVs and breastfeeding can reduce it to 5%. With treat all approach that we have now, we are covering all the pregnant women with three ARVs. It can further reduce to 2% even if breastfeeding is continued. And with no breastfeeding, it can further reduce to 1%. So, these are the statistical risks of HIV transmission from mother to baby, the various scenarios. The current scenario is we need to ensure giving ARVs, which is the single drug, to pregnant women at the earliest with appropriate counseling and advice about breast breastfeeding based on her specific conditions, which will help to reduce the transmission to just 2%. Next, please. 
So what are these services which are made available through National AIDS Control Program in India? The vision is women and children should be alive and free from HIV. For this, we need to work towards elimination of pediatric HIV and improve maternal, newborn, child health and survival in context of HIV infection. Here, the key objective is we need to have integrated PPTCT services with existing RCH program, which provides through NHM a package for early ANC registration, ANC services, and immunization, including PNC services. So how is it that we can have integrated services through with RCH to ensure that the exposed babies do not get HIV infection? Next, please. For elimination of mother to child transmission of HIV, we need to ensure that babies do, are not born with HIV and the mothers continue to take care of them in a healthy way. So what are the targets for process indicators? The first and foremost is more than 95% of estimated pregnant women are registered for antenatal care and receive at least one antenatal care checkup. The second target is more than 95% of all estimated pregnant women are tested for HIV. So both these targets, we need to ensure that the through the RCH program, right from sub-center level up to the medical college hospitals and at the community level, the pregnant women are registered and they are screened for HIV. The ones who are found reactive are confirmed and more than 95% of such HIV positive pregnant women are initiated on antiretroviral treatment at the earliest. Next. So in this PPTCT services, we have the essential package of the first is the routine HIV counseling and testing to all pregnant women enrolled in antenatal care with opt-out option. The universalization of the HIV counseling and screening right up to sub-center level is most important. And accordingly, in most of the states, the ANMs, Anganwadi workers are being sensitized about need for HIV screening and its testing at the earliest. Involvement of the spouse and other family members is important from an antenatal care center to family centric approach so that the support for this mother for healthy pregnancy and healthy baby is available from her own family right from the beginning. Herein, in the context of the HIV infected mother, we do know that we also ensure testing of the spouse and the confirmation and linkage to ART for the spouse also. Provide lifelong ART as per the national guidelines to all pregnant and breastfeeding HIV infected women, regardless of CD4 count and clinical stage, has been implemented since 2015. Provide care for any other associated co-infections like STI, RTI, tuberculosis, any other opportunistic infections, or comorbidities of hypertension or diabetes. Ensuring institutional deliveries for all HIV infected pregnant women. And recently we also have included plasma viral load testing at 32 to 36 weeks of gestation 
for all HIV infected women who are put on ART, irrespective of their duration of ART, to determine the risk of HIV transmission to the baby. The viral load report whether the person, the woman is suppressed or not would also determine the infant prophylaxis, the duration as well as the medicine. And it is very important that even if we are not able to give the ARV for optimum duration during pregnancy, we need to cover the baby, the exposed baby accordingly in the PNC period. Next, please. Providing ARV prophylaxis to infants as per the national guidelines. This includes both the medicines which are to be given, the dosage and the duration. And we would be learning about it today. The nutrition counseling and psychosocial support to HIV infected pregnant women is important for adherence, the ART adherence, for ensuring that she doesn't miss out or drop out of the treatment, to counsel her that there are very high chances and no risk of HIV transmission if she continues and adheres to her ART treatment. Managing any adverse drug effects if she is newly started on ART are very important as part of our ART services when we get any of our ANC women on ART newly registered in our systems. Providing counseling and support for initiation of exclusive breastfeeding within an hour of delivery as the preferred option and its continuation for six months is the most recommended option for infant feeding. Integrating the follow-up of HIV-exposed infants into routine healthcare services, including immunization, so that unnecessary visits to health facilities can be avoided. At the same time, the babies are provided with the vaccination, immunization, which is most essential to prevent other childhood infections. Initiation of cotrimoxazole preventive therapy, that is cyprin or septran, and early infant diagnosis for TNA PCR at six weeks of age and onwards, as per NACO in early infant diagnosis guidelines, is mandatory. And Strengthening community follow-up and outreach through local community networks. You already know that we have, and for this, the various outreach workers and the district staff under Vihan, as well as from Sathi or Plan India, to ensure that the baby and mother pair are followed up till 18 months of age for EID testing, as well as if found positive, the treatment for the baby, ensuring that treatment adherence is followed for mother throughout the period is very important. So in case the mother misses out for her ART pill refill, how do we ensure that she is contacted and brought back to the treatment is very essential through our ART centers. Next, please. There are four pronged strategy for prevention of parent to child transmission, as it can be seen here. The primary prevention to ensure that women do not get infected with HIV. Herein, it is the focus is on general population. The women, so it starts right from the URSH package, which is part of RCH, the adolescent reproductive and sexual health, that women and adolescent girls do not get infected with HIV. 
This is the prong one of primary prevention. The prong two is prevention of unintended pregnancies. This is especially true for HIV positive, not pregnant women. For this, you would know that almost 50% of pregnancies among HIV positive women are not essentially a planned pregnancy. And this could be because of lack of awareness about effective contraceptive or non-use of contraceptive. So the counseling about family planning and in ICTCs and at ART centers for known positive women who are in the reproductive age group and their referral for adoption of suitable dual contraceptive would be most important to prevent unintended pregnancies and adverse consequences because this pregnancy was unplanned. The third prong is prevention of mother to child transmission. Herein, the services that we provide to all women who are diagnosed as HIV infective, infected during their pregnancy and women who are with us and become pregnant would be part of the uh, service package. So ensuring the ART initiation, early ART initiation, ART adherence, the institutional delivery, the, all the services that we discussed earlier would be part of the prevention of MTCT. The prong four is care supported treatment wherein in addition to these services, the appropriate linkages and referrals for her uh, uptake of services would be important. Next, please. So what are the risk factors which can increase the transmission from mother to baby? So there are maternal factors and the baby uh, related factors. The maternal factors are if the mother is recently infected with HIV, as you know, the person, any person who is recently infected would have a very high viral load. And higher the viral load, chances of the transmission of these viruses during pregnancy or any stage would be very high. So high viral load or advanced HIV disease, as you know, lower the CD4 count in the woman when she is diagnosed would also mean that chances of transmission to the baby are high. Other concomitant sexually transmitted infections would also increase the chances of transmission from mother to baby. Some obstetric procedures like forceps or prolonged labor or invasive fetal monitoring could increase the chances of transmission of HIV from mother to baby. The maternal malnutrition and the breast conditions of breast abscess, mastitis can also increase the risk associated with HIV transmission. While in case of infant, the preterm or low birth weight baby, conditions in baby's mouth like oral ulcers or thrush can increase the transmission risk. Mixed feeding has a definitive higher risk of transmission of HIV from mother to baby. Next, please. So if a woman who is HIV positive comes to us at ART centers during pregnancy, we need to ensure that the all pregnant women who are reaching to ICTCs or any health facility receive information about HIV because this is an opportunity or entry point for PPTCT services. Ensuring early ART initiation to a pregnant woman who is diagnosed, newly diagnosed, is a priority. 
such women need to be referred for viral load testing between 32 to 36 weeks of pregnancy to determine what would be the dosage and duration for ARV prophylaxis for the baby. Counseling for institutional delivery. Discussing with the family as to where do they plan to be visiting for institutional delivery. If she is from a subcenter or a PHC area, where do they plan to go? It is not necessary that all HIV positive pregnant women need to have C-sections, normal delivery. If other risk factors are not present, obstetric risk factors are not present, is possible. But institutional delivery and knowing which institution she would be visiting is necessary because accordingly, the ARV prophylaxis for the baby can be made available at that institution, especially if it is far from the ART center or ICTC center. So this is a responsibility for all of us to know about which institute she is going to have delivery so that the ARV medicine is kept ready to be given to the baby. Practices and the medicines, ARV prophylaxis that need to be given to the baby, and the safe obstetric practices are the interventions during pregnancy. Next, please. So, the, there are two options for infant feeding the exclusive breastfeeding and also called as EBF and exclusive replacement feeding. The exclusive breastfeeding means baby gets only breast milk and no other liquids or solids, not even water. Only drops or syrups of vitamins or mineral supplements, medicines are permitted because it is a known fact that the breast milk of the mother contains all the nutrients, all the vitamins, in the form, antibodies in the form that is easily, can be easily digested and used by the baby. As it contains the antibodies, it protects against various infant illnesses, infections of pneumonias, diarrheas. The breastfeeding, exclusive breastfeeding and nothing else should be started within the first hour of birth, both in normal vaginal delivery or for cesarean section. It maximizes the survival chances of HIV exposed infants and is the preferred choice for HIV exposed infants in India. Exclusive replacement feeding is the process of feeding a baby who is not on breastfeeding, but with the nutrients which are required are provided. So it could mean feeding the baby animal milk, the cow milk, dairy milk or infant formulas. However, this feed need to be prepared in a hygienic manner and should be given in a wati spoon. Bottle feeding has to be avoided at all the times. And there cannot be mixed feeding. That is, you can have either exclusive breastfeeding or exclusive replacement feeding. We cannot have breastfeeding and replacement feeding together. So mixed feeding has to be avoided at all the times as it has higher chances of transmission of HIV. Next, please. If Exclusive breastfeeding is not possible for reasons like maternal sickness or twins or mother doesn't have milk, etc. Then we need to reassure mothers and healthcare workers that they need not worry because the mother is on ART. The chances of the viruses in her breast milk would be very low. 
and the risk of transmission would be also minimal in such cases. Hence, early ART initiation and viral load suppression at the earliest is most vital to reduce and minimize this risk of HIV transmission to the baby. The counselors, healthcare providers, even in the general health system should be trained to help pregnant women and the couple in reaching the right decision and to support them in implementing their preferred choice. Many a times, there is a miscommunication that the mother should not give the breastfeed to the exposed baby. However, if and if such message, the miscommunication is passed without understanding the social case scenarios of this mother, whether she has the requisite financial and family support to provide the other feed in an hygienic manner, it may lead to the infections in such baby, the diarrheas, pneumonias, and may increase the mortality risks. So, providing the right knowledge that the mother should continue on her ART, the baby should be continued on the ARV prophylaxis, the baby, it should be explained how the ARV should be provided to the infant and the importance of exclusive breastfeeding to the baby. However, if there are any complications in the mother, in her health or in expression of the milk, then we need to tell them that you please come to us and we will guide you what and how it can be done. So appropriate coordination with the general health system staff for right advice to the mother and the right decision is most important. And the ART staff, the counselors, the staff nurse in our ART centers should be, should be having a lead role in this dialogue. Next, please. So the current national guidelines for infant feeding in HIV exposed and infected infants less than six months of age is exclusive breastfeeding for the first six months of life because that is the best feed for the baby. It contains all the nutrients, that is the carbohydrates, the proteins, fats in the right proportion and the uh, specifics that the baby can absorb, digest. It also has all the antibodies against the various common child illnesses. So exclusive breastfeeding is the feeding that is recommended for the first six months. Beyond six months of age, the breastfeeding should continue while complementary feeds are introduced. These complementary feeds could start with the various homemade preparations. Breastfeeding should only stop once a nutritionally adequate and safe diet without breast milk can be provided to the child. So as we slowly start the weaning with complementary feeds and the need for breast milk is reduced as the baby starts taking the liquid as well as later on the solid feeds and the need is felt that the baby does not really require only breastfeeding, then it could gradually stop. Mothers living with HIV should breastfeed for at least 12 months, that is a year, and may continue for up to two years or beyond, just like the general population, while being fully supported for ART adherence. So here, continuing on ART, being adherent to ART is most vital for these mothers 
to ensure that babies do not get infected with HIV through breast milk. Next, please. If the HIV positive mother plans to return to work, we need to reassure her that shorter duration of less than 12 months is better than never initiating breastfeeding at all. It is made safe as the mother is on ART and the baby is also being started on ARV prophylaxis. The optimal adherence to ART and the suppressed viral load, maternal viral load, there are, there are no difference in such conditions in the infant getting feeding guidelines for HIV exposed versus unexposed infants. In addition, the mother should follow the se protective sex practices and ART adherence to reduce the risk of HIV transmission to their babies. Next, please. So under the national guidelines, it is recommended to provide lifelong ART to all pregnant and breastfeeding women, where currently, as you all know, we give them fixed drug combination, FDC, triple drug ART regimen, irrespective of their CD4 count or clinical stage. And this is important for their own health so that they don't suffer from any OIs, their immunity is maintained, and to prevent vertical HIV transmission to the babies and additional HIV prevention benefits. Presently, as per national guidelines, the FDC of TLD, Tinofovir, Lamivudin, Dolutagravir, is the preferred regimen for pregnant women. Next, please. ARV prophylaxis is advised to babies who are exposed, who are born of these HIV positive women. Single drug ARV prophylaxis for six weeks is advised to infants with low risk of HIV transmission. And this is regardless of type of feeding. While the dual drug, that is two drugs are provided in ARV prophylaxis for infants with high risk of HIV transmission. And the duration depends on the type of feeding. That is the dual drug prophylaxis for six weeks if the baby is not on breastfeeding and 12 weeks if the baby is on breastfeeding. So this is for dual drug prophylaxis. The type of feeding does not determine the duration in case of low risk babies who are on single drug ARV prophylaxis. Next, please. So how does ART help in pregnant and breastfeeding women? It reduces the maternal viral load. It provides the ARVs, the prophylaxis, ARV prophylaxis. It means that we are giving already the baby the ARV medicine and these medicines which we are giving to the baby prevents even if there is any HIV virus transmission from mother to baby after birth, the replicating its replication in baby, overall health of the mother improves and reduces the risk of transmission to the HIV exposed infant. Next, please. So the ART regimen, as we saw, it is TLD to be given once daily. It contains 300 milligram of tinofovir, 300 of lamivudin, and 50 of DTG. It is essential for HIV-1, HIV-2, HIV-1 and 2. It is also to be given for women who are exposed to single-dose nevirapine in the past. It is recommended for co-infected patients with TB and hepatitis. They should be educated about the benefits and risk of DTG and for informed choice. Next, please. 
many a times we come across women who come at the time of delivery and the hiv status is not known in that case the labor room nurse offers bedside counseling and hiv screening test on her consent the whole blood finger prick test is used in the delivery room or labor ward if the test is reactive then the mo in charge needs to initiate art that is tld and confirmation through ictc located in the same center or the nearby center based on where the delivery is happening so the labor room nurse needs to inform the ictc counselor and lab technician for confirmation of hiv status if at ictc she is tested negative the art is stopped if the hiv status is confirmed at ictc then the mother's linkage to art center collection of blood for cd4 count is required next please so for women presenting in active labor the same medicine of tld needs to be started immediately next please uh Sir, take over from here. Yeah. Yeah. So I request Dr. Gilara, sir, uh, to guide you all about the ARV prophylaxis for infants. Uh, thank you very from much. Here. Yeah. Thank you very much, Aitik, for inviting me here, and I thank Dr. Chinmoy Das uh, for uh, including me in this faculty. Uh, as uh, uh, in the beginning, only my Madam Shikala told you. that our first job is to prevent infection in uh, women and if that is not done then child so child comes in picture much later so if we avoid uh, most of the times uh, most 98% of the women are infected by their husbands so to stop infection in women we have to stop infection in husbands if that is failed then women will get it if at that level they are not treated they, they are not properly virally suppressed then they will pass on infection to the child so my uh, talk and my advice will come in uh, picture only if the advice of uh, what dr shrikala said is not followed and then we have to have a risk of child getting infected now there there are some challenges when children are infected firstly pediatric arvs are not available as much as they were early, uh, available earlier and that is two reasons one is that internationally uh barring developing countries particularly countries like india and uh, south africa uh, africa and south america most of the places the major infection has been uh, homosexually transmitted msm transmitted or injection transmitted uh, diseases and therefore women doesn't come in picture because if they are only few bisexual and few women are infected they will come in picture so western countries are not making any arv for pediatric population as far as india is concerned india was making arvs available but the batch size required is a some 5000 uh, bottles or 5000 uh, doses required to be made as one batch and if that is not sold in a particular period of a 6 month or one year then the company will not make so there has been a perennial shortage of pediatric arvs and we are back to square one we started mother to child transmission prevention program at wadi hospital in mumbai in 1992 and at that time it was a pre nevirapine period and at that time only zidovudine and lamivudine were available and zidovudine was used for women we had a four prong mother treatment uh, infant treatment no breastfeeding or modified breastfeeding which i'll explain to you what is modified breastfeeding and uh, delivery by elective caesar section so at that time zidovudine was available only as 100 mg uh, capsule or tablet and uh, we, uh, we had no pediatric uh, dosage available so we used to send few capsules along with the parent to goldsmith and goldsmith used to divide 
that uh, tablet or a capsule in a 10 milligram per dose uh, uh, sachet and then that could be given to the child currently we are back to the same situation where we do not have syrup zidovinin we do not have syrup zidovinin plus lamivudin which is to be manufactured by one company earlier so we send zidovinin and lamivudin tablet to one pharmacy which is close by uh, from here uh, in uh, which is called bikala pharmacy and he is very nice he nicely makes small sachet and provides to the parents so and the, he does that kind of service at i think 150 or 180 rupees he charges and that kind of service is done so currently we are in a fix so i would like to just go through that what is hiv risk assessment of infant born to hiv infected mothers and infant arv prophylaxis options so we divide children or infants into two groups one is a low risk infant and one is high risk infant so what is a low risk infant so those infants which are born to mothers with suppressed viral load suppressed viral load is not always less than 40 or less than 34 copies or tnd it is less than 1000 copies and that is done at least after 32 weeks of pregnancy up to delivery so if you have this kind of uh, situation available this kind of facility available if you have done that then that baby is called a low risk baby in that baby we provide syrup nevirapine or syrup zidovudin in situation where nevirapine will not be effective particularly when nevirapine was used in earlier pregnancy or for art of the uh, mother so infant born to mother with confirm hiv2 or hiv1 and hiv2 combined infections infant born to the mother who had received single dose nevirapine during the earlier pregnancy or delivery infant born to a mother who is on a pi based art regimen due to treatment failure so in this situation we require zidovudin duration of arv prophylaxis from birth till 6 weeks of age next slide please the second group is of a high risk infant who are the high risk infant infants born to hiv positive mother not on art maternal viral load not done after 32 weeks of pregnancy till delivery maternal viral load not suppressed between 32 weeks of pregnancy till delivery and mother newly identified as hiv positive within 6 weeks of delivery and viral load was not done in such situation we provide option of dual prophylaxis which is nevirapine plus zidovudin duration of dual arv prophylaxis in case of exclusive replacement feeding from birth till 6 weeks of age and in case of exclusive breastfeeding from birth till 12 weeks of age so the difference is whether you are breastfeeding or not breastfeeding if breastfeeding is there then at least 12 weeks so double the dose required if zidovudin syrup is not available syrup nevirapine should be used for the first 14 days after birth and after 14 days you switch to other medicine uh, which is called lopinavir ritonavir next please so dose of syrup nevirapine is calculated as 10 mg per ml uh, with the, that kind of dosage so birth to 6 week birth weight if it is between 2 to 2.5 kg it will be 10 mg 1 ml once daily and once it exceeds 2.5 kg it is 15 mg or 1.5 ml once daily after 6 week up to 6 month it will be 20 mg which is 2 ml once daily after 6 months to 9 months it will be 30 mg 3 ml daily and after 9 months until breastfeeding ends 40 mg or 4 ml uh, once daily so infants weighing less than 2 kg the suggested starting dose is 2 mg per kg once daily next next slide please. next slide please oh uh, nevirapine dose for older inf- uh, please go back nevirapine dose for the older infant is provided in a situation where hiv exposure is identified during infancy the mother is breastfeeding and the infant is either hiv uninfected or the status is yet to be determined after taking opinion from sakeb or uh, um, P, uh, 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 what do you call center of excellence pediatric center of excellence any hiv exposed breastfeeding baby beyond 6 weeks of age will need uh, sakeb or uh, 
सेंटर ऑफ एक्सीलेंस ओपिनियन फॉर इंडिकेशन ऑफ ड्यूएल प्रोफाइल एक्सिस नेक्स्ट लाइक प्लीज डोस ऑफ जिडोविडिन इज टेन मिलीग्राम पर एम एल एंड देन इफ इट इज बेबी इज लेस देन टू के जी इज अ फाइव मिलीग्राम पर डोज ट्वाइस डेली विच इज जीरो पॉइंट फाइव एम एल ट्वाइस डेली अप टू सिक्स वीक्स वेन बेबी इज बिटवीन टू एंड टू पॉइंट फाइव के जी द डोज इज डबल एंड इफ बेबी इज मोर देन टू पॉइंट फाइव के जी देन दी डोज इज ट्रिपल सो फाइव मिलीग्राम टेन मिलीग्राम एंड फिफ्टी मिलीग्राम ट्वाइस डेली when you are using lopinavir ritonavir serum serum lopinavir ritonavir should be used for infants prophylaxis in certain specific situations it should be used for infants only after 14 days of their birth because it is not approved in us fda and uh, uh, due to metabolic and cardiac toxicity and pharmacokinetic studies are not done for less than 14 days of baby uh, when judovidin serum is not available Syrup lopinavir ritonavir should be used after 14 days of birth. When zidovidin syrup is not available, syrup nevirapine should be used uh, for first 14 days after birth, and then add lopinavir ritonavir till six weeks in case of uh, exclusive uh, uh, replacement feeding, or 12 weeks in case of exclusive breastfeeding. Next slide, please. next slide please okay so dose of syrup uh, lopinavir ritonavir is 80 mg and 20 mg which is 80 mg uh, lopinavir and 20 mg of ritonavir for infant arb prophylaxis so for infant age birth to 2 weeks it is do not use 2 weeks to 4 weeks and again depending on the weight 2 to 3 kg 0.6 ml 3 to 4 kg 0.8 ml and 4 to 5 kg 1 ml twice daily more than 4 weeks it will be again weight dependent if it is 3 to 5 kg 1 ml twice daily if it is more than 6 kg 1.5 ml twice daily so once daily dosage of lopinavir is not recommended uh, uh, it has been even in adults that it has to be given twice daily lopinavir ritonavir 375 body surface area per dose given twice daily this approximates to lopinavir ritonavir 16 mg and 4 mg both per kg body weight per dose given twice daily next slide please in infant arv prophylaxis infant arv prophylaxis should be started immediately after birth or at their first encounter with the health services so sometime delivery as at home or in some phc the medicine was not available and you come it can be started even if more than 72 hours have elapsed because in the case of a post exposure prophylaxis for adults we do not give pep after 72 hours of elapse though its efficacy in preventing perinatal transmission will be lower it will however will be protective towards the transmission of breastfeeding because here There will be continuous transmission of virions from base feeding. Daily infant ARV prophylaxis should be should continue for a minimum of six weeks, during which the mother should be linked to appropriate ART services. A longer duration, that is twelve weeks of prophylaxis, is needed for infants who are on breast feeding. Next slide. Please. The duration of infant ARV prophylaxis has to be decided based on type of infant. infant with low risk and infant on high risk for low risk if the person uh, if the child is exclusively breastfeeding or which is on replacement feeding in both situation 6 weeks regardless of feeding options but when the child is of high risk then exclusive breastfeeding we will need to provide 12 weeks and replacement feeding will need to provide for 6 weeks next slide please so when we look at the specific intervention during infancy so uh, specific intervention during the infancy are routine well baby visits early infant diagnosis that is uh, tna pcr which is uh, done with a nat test 18 months visit for hiv antibody testing 
observed for signs and symptoms of HIV infection. All HIV exposed um, infants should receive cotrimoxazole at six weeks of age. Follow standard immunization schedule. So just because baby is born to HIV positive mother and suspected to be HIV positive, you should not stop your uh, the baby's immunization. Next slide, please. And ways in which ART reduces risk of PPTCT, or PTCT, which is treat maternal infection. That is most important. Protect HIV exposed infant from HIV infection. Improve overall health of mother. Reduces viral replication and maternal viral load. And loads fetus with ARVs that prevent placentally transmitted variants from replicating. So if you provide this, then all these things can be done. Next slide, please. Now we go to some case scenarios on PPTCT and infant ARV prophylaxis. In case one, there's a scenario where question is, Mrs. A was initiated on ART in 2018 on TLE, so effavorance based regimen. She's adherent to treatment. She has now reported to the ART center and informs that she is a two months pregnant. Her latest result of viral load testing was target not detected. And question is, as the uh, medical officer, what action will you, you will you take? So just think over and then we'll go through the action. So it will be counselor with respect to transitioning to TLD regimen because now we are shifting most of the patient from TLE to TLD. ART adherence, linkage to PPTCT program, protected sexual practices to avoid fresh HIV infection, not only fresh HIV infection, but also new other STDs. Institutional delivery for interventions during labor and delivery and timely ARV prophylaxis to the baby. Feeding practices and care of breast and nipples and that will be common to all scenarios. Nutritional supplementation, regular antenatal visits, iron, folic acid, and calcium supplementation. Next slide, please. Next case, please. In case two, the scenario is that Mrs. C received triple drug ARV prophylaxis in 2020. During her first pregnancy, she was advised TLE once a day as prophylaxis and it was stopped seven days after discontinuation of breastfeeding. So at that time, ART was not given uh, based on uh, uh, test and treat. It was based on CD4 count. So, and it was stopped after seven days of discontinuing breastfeeding. Now she reports to the ART center with two months of pregnancy. Her latest CD4 count is 420. Question number one, what ART regimen should uh, she be advised? And question two is, mother's viral load result done at 34 weeks of gestation was 500 copies per ml. She plans to breastfeed the baby. What infant prophylaxis should be advised and for what duration? So uh, in uh, Mrs. C being needs to be started on ART immediately because it's a test and treat scenario now. And in any case, we need to prevent uh, the uh, infant. After explaining the needs for um, lifelong ART adherence, hence recommended uh, Mrs. C to be initiated on TLD regimen, one tablet once day. Infant prophylaxis, we think of give uh, syrup nevirapine once a day for six weeks. And as she was on triple drug ART regimen, chances for archived resistance to NNRTI are minimal. As mother's viral load result done after uh, at 34 weeks of gestation was 500 copies, the baby becomes a low risk baby and a low risk infant for HIV transmission. So duration of six weeks, regardless of any type of breastfeeding is good enough for this baby. Next slide. Next slide, please. Who is controlling the slide deck?
I'm sorry for the technical snag. Uh, just wait for a minute when it restarts. So extremely sorry for the delay. Just give me two minutes. Yes. Is the screen visible, sir? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's visible. Okay. okay. Go to next slide. In case three, the scenario is that Mrs. D has reported to ART center at seven months of pregnancy. She is ART naive and her CD4 count is 385. What ART regimen should she be initiated on? Mother's viral load, let us first talk, uh, first part only. Mrs. D needs to be started on ART immediately. After explaining the need for lifelong ART adherence, advise TLD tablet, one tablet, once daily. Mother's viral load report done at 36 weeks of gestation is 20,000 copies. She plans to breastfeed the baby. Question two will be, what infant pro uh, prophylaxis should be advised and for what duration? So in this case, baby should be advised dual ARB prophylaxis because now baby becomes a high risk baby, high risk scenario. The syrup neurapin once a day and syrup zidovidin twice a day, both to be given for a minimum duration of 12 weeks because the baby is going to be breastfed. Mother's viral load report done at 36 weeks is more than 1000. And therefore the baby becomes a high risk infant for HIV transmission. And the baby will be advised two drugs and duration will be 12 weeks as mother has opted for breastfeeding and has not taken adequate duration of ART for optimal viral suppression in breast milk. Next slide, please. In uh, case four, the scenario is that Mrs. E was advised a single dose of nevrapine as prophylaxis in her previous pregnancy in 2011. She was later initiated on TLE in 2014. She has now reported to ART center at three months of pregnancy. Question is, what ART regimen should she be initiated on? Now, transition of ART regimen from TLE to TLD, after explaining the uh, benefits of DTG in achieving faster viral suppression, and TLD is effective in women with history of single dose nevirapine previously also. Next slide, please. This continues, mother's viral load report done at 33 weeks of gestation was 250 copies per ml. She plans to breastfeed the baby. What infant prophylaxis should be advised and for what duration? So baby should be advised syrup zudovidin twice a day for six weeks because there is a history of single dose nevirapine in the previous pregnancy. Hence likely presence of archived resistance to NNRTI, in this case nevirapine, the mother and subsequent transition to infant. Hence, zidovidin twice daily will be advised. Duration of ARV prophylaxis will be six weeks. Here, the mother's viral load being less than 1000, uh, which is just a 250 copies per ml, baby becomes a low risk uh, infant for HIV transmission. Therefore, six weeks, regardless of type of uh, breastfeeding or no breastfeeding, in uh, low risk infant, uh, six weeks will suffice. Next. In this case, Mrs. F is a asymptomatic postnatal PL a person living with HIV who presents at the ART center three days after delivery. Her CD4 count is 550 cells per uh, uh, cubic millimeter. She has opted for ERF. The weight of the baby is 2.4. Question is what is the next step in the management of the mother? Now, Mrs. F needs to be started on ART immediately after explaining to the need uh, for the need of lifelong ART adherence. TLD one tablet a day, linkage to PPTCT program, feeding practices and care of breast and nipples, nutritional counseling, and protected sexual practices. So these three will be common to all the scenarios. Next slide. In the this scenario again, what is the next step in the management of the baby? Baby should be advised to baby should be advised dual ARV prophylaxis, syrup nevirapine once a day and syrup zidovidin twice a day, both to be given till six weeks of age. Dose will be uh, syrup nevirapine one ml uh, do, uh, once a day 
and serum zolomidin one ml twice a day. ARV prophylaxis may work even after 72 hours of preperinatal exposure of uh, HIV viruses in the baby, as we discussed earlier. As the mother is on, uh, mother is ART naive, her baby becomes a high risk infant for HIV transmission. And the baby will be advised two drug regimen rather than one drug for HIV prophylaxis. In this case, nevirapine and zodovidin. And duration will be six weeks as mother has opted for replacement feeding. If the mother would have opted for breastfeeding, it would have been 12 weeks. Next slide, please. In this case, Mrs. G was screened for HIV and found to be reactive by finger prick test performed in the labor room. She was immediately given a single tablet of TLD. She was linked to an ART center the next day. After her confirmatory test report for HIV was positive, weight of the baby is 2.8 kg. In this question, uh, in this scenario, basically availability of TLD at labor room is important. So I think we need to put these guidelines for labor room also. The question is, what is the next step in the management of mother? Mrs. G needs to be started on ART immediately after explaining the need for lifetime ART adherence. TLD1, uh, in this case, you need to reconfirm. So ART uh, center or ICTC will reconfirm whether she is really positive or not because only one test was there. Linkage to PPDCT program, feeding practices and care of breast and nipples, nutritional counseling and protected sex practices. Next slide, please. What advice need to be given for the baby if mother opts for breastfeeding? In this case, baby should be advised dual ARB prophylaxis, which is really syrup, nevirapine once a day and zidovidin twice a day, both to be given for a duration of 12 weeks. And dose is already mentioned. Explanation, as the mother is ART naive, her baby becomes a high risk infant for HIV transmission as the baby will be advised two drugs of, uh, for uh, ARV prophylaxis, that is nevirapine and zodovirin. And duration will be 12 weeks because mother opted for breastfeeding. So if you understand the previous uh, context properly, I think all these kind of scenario you can answer yourself. If it was a face-to-face -face, uh, meeting, we would not have shown you all these things, would have asked you questions. Next slide, please. In this scenario, Mrs. H is a 24-year-old, newly diagnosed HIV-positive pregnant woman linked to ART center. She has confirmed HIV-1 and HIV-2 co-infections. She is three months pregnant and her CD4 count is 700 plus. And uh, the question is, what ART regimen she should be started on? Mrs. H needs to be started on ART immediately after explaining the need for lifetime ART adherence. She will be advised TLD once a day and TLD is effective in both HIV, one, HIV-2, as well as HIV-1 and 2 co-infections. Next slide. Now, in this scenario, the same scenario which continues, mother's viral load report done at 36 weeks of gestation is target not detected. She plans to breastfeed the baby. What infant prophylaxis should be advised and for what duration? So, syrup zodovidin twice a day is good enough as a drug of choice for prophylaxis. Because nevirapine will not be effective in HIV-2. Zodovidin is the uh, choice of ARV prophylaxis in babies want to confirm HIV-2 and HIV-1 or 1 plus 2. As mother's viral load report done after 30 weeks of uh, gestation was suppressed less than 1000. In this case, TND. Undetectable is untransmittable. And that is a rule. The baby becomes a low risk infant for HIV transmission. Duration will be six weeks regardless of feeding in the low risk uh, infant scenario. Next slide, please. Uh, in this case, Mrs. I, a newly diagnosed VLHIV, has been recently linked to an ART center with a three months old baby who is breastfeeding. Now, how will you manage the her? Initiate her on TLD with uh, preparedness and counseling, care of nipples and breast feeding, counseling, and protected sexual practices. Next slide, please. Now, in this case, how will you manage the baby of this PLHIV? So, send the uh, uh, dry blood sample or DBS uh, sample for, uh, 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 dry blood spot sample for TNA, PCR, HIV, as per EID algorithm. 
start cpt uh, the uh, cortamexol uh, prevention ideally the baby should be evaluated by a pediatrician or presence of clinical signs of hiv infection e referral to sake i don't think e referral will continue forever because of covid scenario if you are close by then you can send the baby to e uh, sake or uh, e referral or a video meeting can be done with the uh, center of excellence also for opinion on management of hiv exposed baby immunization of baby as per schedule and if tna pcr is negative keep under regular follow up and at a 6 month of age perform rapid antibody test and subsequent tna pcr if necessary as per eid algorithm and take further decision accordingly but confirm at 18 months of age as per the guidelines so 18 month confirmation will remain in place next slide please probably this is the last case uh, mrs k was diagnosed hiv infected recently she was reported to an art center and informed that she is 6 month pregnant her cd4 count is 285 cells per cubic millimeter a question is what art regimen should be started in this pl hiv this is k needs to be started on art immediately after explaining the need for lifetime art adherence and preparing her to accept art initiation tld once a day so tld is a rule of rule number 1 rule of thumb she needs to be started on covotamaxol uh, prophylaxis also as her cd4 count is less than 350 cells per millimeter though we do not practice in private setup we practice only at 200 uh, cell count next slide please now in this uh, same uh, scenario mother's viral load report done at 36 weeks of gestation is 55000 she plans to breastfeed the baby so and question is what infant prophylaxis should be advised and for what duration if syrup zidovirin is not available so very specific scenario baby should be advised dual hiv prophylaxis uh, arv prophylaxis syrup zidov uh, nevirapine and syrup lopinavir ritonavir to be started only 14 week 14 days after the birth syrup nevirapine once a day started immediately after birth and continued for till 12 weeks of age syrup lopinavir ritonavir added at 2 weeks and then will continue uh, till 12 weeks of age explanation is basically mother's viral load report done at 36 week of gestation was unsuppressed what was high 55000 our uh, benchmark is 1000 the baby becomes a high risk infant for hiv transmission and hence the baby will be advised two drug for arv prophylaxis that is nevirapine and zidovirin as zidovirin is not available we would like to add lopinavir ritonavir but as lopinavir ritonavir cannot be given in first two weeks of life then it has to be added only after two weeks and will continue so on duration of 12 week as mother has opted for breastfeeding if she would have opted for uh, uh, formula other, other uh, uh, alternative feeding then it was only 6 weeks next slide In this scenario, Mrs. L, 26 year old, was registered with ART center in 2012. She was initiated on ART at that time TLE in 2015. She became lost to follow up after one year as she shifted to her village. She has now uh, reported in the active labor room, active labor. How should we manage this patient? Now she is to. immediately be given a single tablet of tld she should be linked to the art center the next day for restarting lifelong uh, art and advising to have a role of art adherence for her health because she was not adherent earlier so the adherence counseling is uh, aggressively required in this case preventing transmission of hiv infection to her baby care of nipples and breast uh, feeding counseling and protected sexual practices next slide please Now in this scenario, Mrs. L delivered a baby by normal delivery with a weight of 3.2 kg and has opted for breastfeeding. What is the next step in the management of baby if syrup zidovirin and syrup lopinavir ritonavir are both not available? So baby should be advised dual ARV prophylaxis as both syrup zidovirin and lopinavir are not available. Baby can be advised pediatric ZLN, which is a FDC tablet available uh, as per weight. 
banned twice a day until 12 weeks of age because baby opted uh, mother opted for breastfeeding so zedalen is required 60 mg one dispersible tablet twice a day for 12 weeks as the mother is arv uh, naive art naive her baby becomes a high risk infant for hiv transmission and the baby will be advised two drugs for arv prophylaxis as both zidovudin and lopinavir are not available baby can be advised pediatric zedalen fdc tablet as per weight brand brand and uh, 12 weeks as mother has opted for breastfeeding and has not taken adequate duration of arv for optimal viral suppression in breast milk and we can add a scenario if we are in mumbai or the, in a place where a pharmacist can help uh, divide the tablet into sachet and give next so in exceptional scenarios and for high risk infant born to hiv2 positive mother or for high risk infant born to mothers who had received single dose uh, navirapine during earlier pregnancy or delivery opinion of sakeb should be sought and i can i opine here that we have hardly seen any baby which is transmitted uh, having hiv2 from mother to child so mother to child transmission of hiv2 is extremely rare next slide thank you now uh, you can go for post test thank you sir so we'll just take up the questions first yeah, yeah, sure, and sure. then move to uh, post test i'm just checking the chat box yeah uh kiran sir you can unmute participants till then uh participants are requested to please ask their questions you can unmute your mic Uh, so there's a question from the chat box. Suppose a woman whose treatment failed on first line uh, ZLN and is put on second line TLD. She subsequently becomes pregnant. Will zidovudin or and nevirapine help in preventing infection in the baby? Uh, Kiran sir, am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, Kiran sir, please check. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, sir, should I repeat the question? Yeah. Yeah. Suppose a woman whose treatment failed on first line ZLN and is put on second line TLD, she subsequently becomes pregnant. Will zidovudin or and nevirapine help in preventing infection in the baby? So, in case uh, nevirapine was not used earlier, uh, it can be given. But in uh, if uh, TLE is failed, then uh, nevirapine will also fail because it is from the same class and there is a uh, class resistance. So, it will not work. Uh, any more questions? Participants are requested to please unmute their mics. They can also uh, type in the chat box. Uh, Kiran, please confirm if participants are having mic access. Yes, yes, mic uh, access. Okay. Uh, sir, in uh, continuation to the earlier question, so what will be the prophylaxis for such a baby? The prophylaxis will be zidovudin with uh, uh, nevirapine arutinavir. Uh, possibly zidovudin may not work, but at least we have a backup of uh, the, 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 what do you call uh, uh, um, uh, lopina arutinavir. But that will be only after two weeks, and the mother is already on TLD, so it, uh, baby will be also getting TLD from breast milk. Yeah, next question: If ZLN pediatric ZLN tablet is to be used in the absence of azt syrup and lopinavir ritonavir syrup what is the dosage i think 60 mg na per uh, uh, 60 mg yes yeah, 60 mg 
We are not used, so I don't know how they, that is decided, uh, divided, but it is 60 milligram. Any more questions from the participants? So I don't think there are any questions. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am, for joining us. Well, I, I would like to volunteer and tell one thing. That yes, in last five to six years, we have not seen a single mother to child transmission. We had probably 160, 165 deliveries, not a single transmission. So I think the goal, uh, which one of the preparatory slides I have seen was 5%. Our goal should be 1%. Even the uh, pre-ART era, when we started with only uh, Zodovidin in a Wadia uh, project of PHO Wadia model, where we had only 2% transmission, mother to child transmission. So at this time, mother to child transmission should be zero. We, we, we have to aim at zero, not uh, definitely more than 1%. Right, sir. So. Uh, APD ma'am, any yeah. remarks from your end? Yes. Yeah, uh, just to sum up, I would say that as ART staff, we uh, first need to ensure that the women who in the reproductive age group who are with us, are aware about the appropriate effective family planning methods. We link them to family planning services so that we uh, can prevent the unintended pregnancies. Any pregnant woman who comes to us at ART center, we do provide the counseling about adherence, about her uh, uh, the minimal risk, as sir already highlighted, of the transmission to the baby if she adheres to the ART, providing her the emotional support that is required, especially if the mother is newly infected and is undergoing uh, the emotional trauma associated with the HIV infection, the new diagnosis, to provide her support so that she is adherent by addressing any uh, advance, uh, any adverse reactions at the earliest to ensure that she has ARVs, uh, especially if the ART center is very far off from uh, her residence, how do we ensure that the ART refill uh, is properly provided to her, uh, closest to her home? These uh, modalities need to be decided and the medical officer of the ART center need to prioritize these women and the couples for uh, receiving services. And uh, this will only help us eliminate the transmission to the baby. It should not be business as usual, uh, but all the possible uh, strategies that we can adopt so that the mother continues to be on ART and has an uh, uneventful normal delivery at an institute where the baby also can be started immediately on ARV prophylaxis can be ensured, whether it is in the public sector, private sector, urban or rural area. I think if we can achieve, as sir mentioned, that no new infections in the babies, it would be the biggest uh, success and satisfaction for us to work as a team. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, thank you to Chinmay, ma'am, for opening remarks. Uh, ma'am, can I take the feedback form now? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Kiran, sir, can we have the feedback form, please? Participants are requested to please attempt the feedback form. There are four questions in all. Please scroll through your screen and attempt all the four questions. These are single choice questions. So you will have to choose one answer for each question.
Oh, Kiran sir, we can end the e-poll now. Thank you to all the participants for patient listening. The next session is now on 15th of July. The topic is first line ARD in adults and adolescents, management of ARTV toxicities. The next uh, the next NDLS will be on 19th July, ART treatment failure in adults and adolescents. Thank you so much. We can close the session now.